joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soraya. We've got some great stories for you on the show, starting at Trump National Golf Club, where they have renovated their gift shop. And wait till you see what you can buy now. Then we're going to take you over to Dominic's, an Italian restaurant that's been here on the hill for over 40 years. And finally, I had a chance to catch up with some of the most amazing artists that you will see really anywhere at the Reflections Art Competition. Let's start there. Let's take a look. Reflections is a, it's a national PTA sponsored event that we have in our district at each site, each school level. And those chairs, um, they get, you know, for elementary school, they get art in different categories from the primary grades, which are kindergarten, first and second. Those are judged against each other and are curated in the show. And then um, uh, third, fourth and fifth is the secondary. And then middle school has its own category and chairs and high school has their chairs. So each school level has a show or a celebration of their student art and then because it's sort of a, a motivating factor, there is a bit of a competition. I, I prefer to think of this as a, as a gallery opportunity. So it's definitely a way that if you do art for reflections, your art gets shown and you get a show. Um, but as a motivating factor, there is a competition side of things. So uh, the first place entries from in each of the categories, and there are six categories, film, dance choreography, music, composition, visual arts, photography, and literature. Okay. In each category, the winner goes up to the council level, and our council is the PVPOSD. Um, and then I'm, as the chair of that, I am responsible for getting that art judged by professionals, and professionals in the field of that particular art and then the winning pieces from that go up to the 33rd district, which is all of Southern California. And we get our show here as a way to honor the students for having put in really extraordinary effort and being able to show, show off the art that our district has put together. And how many submissions do you get? It depends on the school. Some schools, uh, like at Rancho Vista, when I was there, when my oldest son was there, we would get 250 submissions. At Peninsula High School this year, we had 80 submissions. So it really depends on the school level and on, on the individual um, chairperson and the PTA's activity in promoting and, you know, how much time and attention is put to it in the classrooms. It's also so important because art sort of goes to the wayside and really so many creative people are everywhere. So just talk about the importance of that. Well, I think that's probably at the heart of the PTA's sponsorship of this program because because art education did come out of schools when the budgets got cut and it's usually the first things to go and this just provides an opportunity and uh, kind of the momentum of art for kids it's it's very self-generated they have all year to do it and it's based on a theme and the theme changes every year so it's you know they're not just rehashing the same thing every year and they can go from kindergarten up to 12th grade doing reflections. And what was the theme this year? So this year's theme was Looks Within. And you'll see, uh, it's really interesting to see what people, what the kids have done with that theme because half of their artwork is the skill and the, you know, the execution of what they've done. But then the other half is their, their interpretation of the theme. And they write uh, an artist statement that goes in with their submission and half of the judging goes on the interpretation. Tell me about, about what your video is about. Well, it's about a girl talking to her friends and she comes out in a mysterious castle and then she walks in and then she sees like all this amazing old stuff and then she um, sees monsters and starts dancing with the monsters. I just really wanted to do it because I really wanted to do my own video and it's my first time. And somehow I just won first place for dancing. That's kind of amazing. Now tell me in the video, are you shooting the video? Are you in the video? Tell me about it. I'm in the video and my dad actually shoot it. Nice. My video is about um, piano. How long have you been playing piano? For about half a year, I think. 
Is this the first time you ever entered the reflections? Yes. How does it feel knowing other people are watching your video? It feels really, really good. This is your first, first place. Tell us about it. Um, I'm really happy and excited about it. I was on a trip throughout the summer, so I was kind of cramming throughout the last week, but yeah, I managed to get it done, so. What inspired you to paint the picture that you did? I was like brainstorming at my art center, and I was just thinking about nature and like our world, and then I like wanted to take a picture, and then we just kind of brainstormed, and then we ended up getting a picture frame, and then we just put it all in there. It was pretty random, yeah. I made the um, the video um, like several months in advance because it took a really long time to edit it. And for the dance, we didn't like film it until like two days before it was due. <laughs> what kind of a dance did you do? Um, ballet with my sister. And so you also choreographed it as well, is that right? Uh, yeah. How long have you been doing that? Since I was four. Uh, I feel like it could have worked more on the technique in the dance itself, but I think it looks good like in the finished product. What's it like knowing that other people are looking at your work? It makes me kind of nervous. Hopefully they like it. My teacher, Miss Jimenez, she told us about the program at school, and then she's like, oh, you guys should enter into it if you want to. It's a great opportunity. So I was like, okay. <laughs> okay so tell me about what inspired you um, for your picture that won. Um, for the photo, I was actually in Cuba and I was walking around on the streets and then all of a sudden I see like puddle and it had those flowers in it and the cigarette and I thought it just looked so pretty and I took three shots of that photo so the first two shots were like out of focus and then the last shot was that one which was really nice so we came out and focused. I hear you have a poem here. Tell me about your poem. My poem is called The African Leopard. And that's because you are actually from South Africa, is that right? Yes. How long have you been here? I was actually born here. My mom was raised in South Africa. Very nice. So your, did your mom tell you a little bit about it? Yes. What's it like when you see other people reading it? I feel happy. Yeah. You should, you should be very proud of yourself. I feel happy that they like it because of my hard work. That's right. Very good. What does it feel like for you being principal, knowing how important art is to keep it going? I'm very proud of all the students, not just the students of Silver Spur, but all the students who have their work on display here. And I think it's so art is so important because for some students who some of the academic subject areas or even coming to school might be difficult they can find an expression with art and I can think of several students at our school who I know this is one of the favorite events of the year. This is really a testament to what our parents do because if our parents didn't do all this work um, it really wouldn't happen so these are all PTA volunteers that do all this and PTA nationwide does this so we're part of you know a much larger program to keep arts in the schools. Obviously this is overwhelmingly successful, but just look at the people in here. <laughs> and I'm excited it's in this room because now our next two board meetings we will have art on the wall. This is what you know kids just love to do and create on their own, so it's special and it remind ourselves of why we come and volunteer every day here. And if you're in the mood for some amazing Italian Sicilian pizza, look no further than our next story. Now at Dominic's, they've been cooking up Italian food for over 40 years. I had a chance to meet the owner, Teresa Sardisco. Here's more on their story. Teresa, we're here in Dominic's, which is your restaurant. Give us a little history on, uh, on Dominic's. It's actually started as the Radio Cafe on Terminal Island in 1944. And then it's, it was there to keep my grandmother out of the canneries. My grandfather ran the canneries, uh, Starkist uh, Tuna and um, Southern Pacific. So he opened up a restaurant to help my grandmother get out of the cannery because so she, she was a good cook and so was he. So it was called the Radio Cafe. So it was there for 10 years. Uh, when they enlarged the harbor, they, everybody had to go. And that's when all the Japanese camps were there and all that. So he wasn't going to do it anymore. I just had my grandmother stay at home. And then um, his friend said, hey, I have a warehouse. Why don't you make it into a restaurant? And my grandfather was like, okay. Because when he first came to the country, one of the things he did was asphalting. And this was the guy that did the asphalting. 
So if you go to our other restaurant, which is in Carson, used to be Wilmington, on Avalon, that used to be the only way to and from the harbor. Right, and it's right on the train tracks. The train still stops to this day to get food. Um, so they opened that in 1956. It was just the um, kitchen was the whole restaurant, had a counter. And as the years went on, my dad took it over probably like in early 60s because my grandfather passed away in 78. He wasn't well. So my dad has added on and we've been there 65 years and here 40 years. So I'm third generation. So. I was going to ask you, so pretty much growing up you knew you were going to be in the restaurant business, yes? Pro probably, probably subconsciously, yes. You know, as much as you fight it, it's yes. just, you know, it doesn't, yes, yes, yes. You know, it's, it's amazing because when you talk about Italian food, it's very cultural and it's... Don't confuse it. Sicilian. Sicilian. I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah. there's the Italian and then there's the Sicilian. So the tastes and the flavors are different. Ta talk about that. Um, from what I've experienced, actually more as time, like now times, because when growing up, to me, most of the Italian places you went to, which wasn't many, were like us, like a heavy gravy, heavy sauces, heavy just more comfort food. It wasn't light like uh, you, we have pasta with garlic and oil, tomato, basil. We definitely don't have gluten-free crust and all that stuff. But it was, I think it's just more more comforting food. Now when you go to these places that especially are trending with the cauliflower crust, which is great. I'm not knocking it, but we, we just stick to tradition because if we try to keep up with all the trends, we you lose yourself in that. And there's not that many mom and pop places. We just got the LA Times again for one of the oldest restaurants which is nice and, there, and it's so sad because every year you see they've changed there's not I think we were one of two that have been the same family everybody else has changed hands sold or you know try to keep the tradition going one thing on the menu that is like the Dominic's is it the pizza is it the pasta is it just one thing or is it just really a combination of things it, it, it's a combination, you know, we still make our sauce from scratch. We, you know, one of the things my, my father, you know, insists, and I, us too, I don't think we know how, we don't do any cuts. So like our milk, our cheese is whole milk cheese, not part skim milk. So, but our chicken sauce is super popular, which isn't really chicken in it. It's, it's my grandfather used to marinate it and barbecue it on certain holidays. So we used to get it as a, so customers started getting a taste of it. So it's one of our top, but it's the sauce. It, it, some people put it on steaks. We have 26 ounce steaks. I mean, we've kind of grown into our beef ribs are to die for Friday, Saturdays. So we still make our sausage, hand make our meatballs. So there's a lot that we, we do. Um, our bread, um, Ramona Bakery makes our bread, uh, Europa, your Ramona, because you know, over the years you can't keep up doing everything, but they do still stick to the great bread. Bread makes is key. You gotta have good bread. So always gotta have good bread. And our salad dressing. People drink our salad dressing. We have a lot of regulars. And it's nice, I think, because you know they come in, already know what they're gonna have. The one time, like, I'll have it on the table, right? Oh no, I'm not gonna have that. What? No, you're gonna have this tonight. No, but no, normally it's what they're gonna have. And it's nice, and they love it. And I'll tell you, one of the biggest things for me to see is, is a widow or if somebody's uh, out of town like and they you know you like to go out by yourself we get a lot of people who will have no problem coming here by themselves because we make them feel comfortable I put them to work anyways they we get them drunk something but it's nice to see you don't see that out you know yeah. people they they rather stay home but you know and it's we have a lot of widows that come up that have no problem hanging out because once you've been here you get to know the people and it's fun. It's a family place. Yeah, absolutely. This is the family table right here. Yes. So. And even Joni, I talked to your the waitress. Thirty years. Thirty years. So yeah, she's amazing. And it's amazing to hear that somebody has worked for a family for that long. We have quite a few. We're very fortunate there. We have we have a cook that's been there. I'm gonna say. 52 years, yeah, we just had a dishwasher not that long ago retire. We had a waitress a couple years ago retire after 50 years. So we have a couple other waitresses that have been there 30 years and cashiers. Yeah, we're very fortunate in that. Did 
Did your recipes come from your grandfather and, and that, or where did they come from? They came from my grandfather's family, okay. yes. And they're from Sicily. They're from a little town called Grisi outside of Palermo. And uh, my grandfather, to the day he died, his English was not good, not too good. But he was really well known, and I wish one of us would have learned his strawberry pies. None of us, I was so young, and my dad was so busy running the business, and my uncles, and they never took to the baking part. But his baking skills were phenomenal. Lost art, lost art. I was going to ask you if you had a favorite dish growing up. I always liked the ravioli, so everywhere I go, I had cheese ravioli. I, I do love pasta and pizza. I love bolognese. I love meat sauce. I love pizza. I eat pizza, let me tell you. I am, my friends die. I can get the movies. I'll get a frozen pizza. like, what are you doing? I love pizza. I don't know. I just Our sausage here is my favorite. We do cook it, so there's no grease, no spicy. It's known. Everybody comes here for our sausage. What is special about your pizza? Probably the fact that we don't measure. And the, if you ever pick up one of our pizzas, they're so heavy. <laughs> Every now and then we'll have a new person complain, there's too much stuff on your pizza. I'm like, well, you ordered the special. And they're like, still too much stuff. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. You got to wear your big girl panties when you come here, man. I want you to tell me a little bit about your nonprofit. Pedro Pet Pals. Yes. Pedro Pet Pals was started um, in the 90s. Uh, it was because my attention got brought to we needed new shelters. The city shelters were horrible. It was, it was like a, it was like a death sentence for animals, and the people's perception. And it's been so many years, even with my customers. Because you know, if I do it, all my customers and family and friends. If you're my friend, family, run because I get everybody. We have a lot of fun. We all our funds are raised. Uh, I don't. I, we don't have handouts. We raise all our monies. We do uh, bingo for boot. We have all kinds of events all year round. 100% of the proceeds go to the animals. Um, we were featured in San Pedro Magazine last month about what we do. We support the uh, LA Animal sh Shelters with equipment, leashes. It became a nonprofit in 2009. So why was that close to your heart? Um, just trying to help those with no voice, you know, and, and, and educating the public. It's even now to this date, we're in 2020. I mean, between um, me doing community outreach, my platforms here, the other business, all the functions I go to, people like I say, oh, they want to adopt. They always come to me. Well, go down to the shelter, you know, ask for so and so. Where's that at? I'm like, are you kidding me? No, and it's a, it's right there on Channel and Gaffey. So it's still, we still have a lot of education to do on spay neuters, vaccines. Uh, we just did the RPV uh, Smoochie Poochie. We did free microchipping. We sponsored that with Snips LA. So we try to keep everybody safe and healthy and we, you know, and everybody's welcome. You don't have to show any kind of income. We just get it all taken care of. So it's pretty cool. And you, we, you can follow us on Pedro, Pedro Pet Pals uh, Facebook. We also have PedroPetPals.com. Just talk a, bit, a little bit about the importance of being a part of the community because you've been successful for so long. Huge part, huge part. You have to. Um, you know, and it's not just with food. Food is to me is love. But, you know, you, there's a lot. You just have to get out there and, you know, people come to me all the time. And it's not just uh, it's sports. We have the churches. We have, you know, funerals. We have weddings. So we have all kinds of stuff that we, and it's kind of a balancing act because you're dealing with people's feelings and it, 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 it's good. You have to, community's family. They're my customers. And even if you're not my customer, I'm still going to support you and help you if you come to me. So... Yeah, we make you our family. So that's, once you come here, you're done. <laughs> you're in. Well, that's a wrap from Dominic's. There's just one thing left to do, and I'm going to do it right now, and that's eating the pizza that they made for me. My favorite, mushroom and olive. And finally, over at Trump National Golf Club, they have renovated their golf shop. And wait till you see what you can buy over there now. Let's go shopping. All right, Keith, you have been here for six years and we're in the newly renovated uh, golf store. It's very different. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so we actually went through a full renovation uh, completely in October. Uh, we changed out the entire carpet. 
We opened up the, we changed the entire front counter actually. We moved it from the corner of the pro shop where I actually had the best views in the entire pro shop. Uh, we actually opened that up to the guests, moved the counter to uh, the counter directly to where when you enter the pro shop is the first thing you see. So that way our, our staff could greet the guests right when they walk into the pro shop. They don't have to look around. Uh, we also changed the wallpaper. It opened up the floor a lot more. Uh, we're going to be, we're almost there, completely done with the, with the renovation. We're going to add some fixtures. We're going to add some photos of old time uh, photos of just golfers in Los Angeles, for example. Uh, you know, just different celebrities, different athletes golfing in L.A. Nice. It's really cool, kinda, kind of retro uh, with, within golf and just in general from there. Yeah. Okay. Now, we know the views here are always amazing, but you've got the window area over there, which is new. People can sit and kind of hang out. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we actually, it's going to be uh, eventually most likely our shoe area where guests could try on shoes. But at the same time, they could walk around, get again, get take in the view of, you know, the golf courses from the building itself. Uh, like I, I've always mentioned within the six years I've been working here, you know, the best view in the pro shop was for our staff members to look at. Right. You know, yes, I yes, I would love my staff members. Uh, you know, I always love them. I take care of them. But... In reality, let's open it up for the guests. Right. You know, something that we really wanted to stress for the guest experience when they walk into the pro shop. Now, we know that you have amazing product for golfers, and we'll get into that. But I have to just point out, there are footballs in here now, and I am a big football girl. Tell me about that. Oh, those, it's very cool. Uh, something that we started selling on our online, uh, trumpstore.com. Okay. And we saw them online, and we're like... We should bring these into the pro shop and you know we brought some that are usc colors you know it's really cool there it's pure leather uh made by links and kings it's really cool it's something we got in right before the super bowl uh you know really good touch right be right before the super bowl i mean who doesn't want to trump football in their house i want one for sure oh it's great i mean it looks really good i mean like I said, it's pure leather, best leather you could get. Um, and then it's really cool. We've gotten a lot of good feedback, you know, from some of the guests. Some of them just saw it, need it, and they needed it oh, right yeah, away. Yeah. <laughs> for, for sure, that's a need. Now, also, the glassware is is just amazing. Um, how do you sort of pick that out? You know, we actually get a lot of feedback from our rest, from our guests. Um, you know, we also bring in some trial things. For example, we brought in decanters, uh, you know, whiskey, uh, whiskey decanters as well. A uh, couple things we've noticed that sold the best are our shot glasses and then our fairway rocks glass. So it's for, you know, rocks glass for scotch drinkers, whiskey drinkers. But it's pretty cool because it has a golf ball imprinted below it uh, with our logos. Those have been our hottest items. Of course, wine glasses are going to sell really well too. But we actually get a lot of feedback from the guests. You know, there's a lot of different suggestions. Uh, for example, one of them was a, a wine stopper. Well, so we actually have wine stoppers now with our logo and in the shape of a golf ball. Yeah, so we, you know, we do get a lot of uh, guests coming in from the restaurant. So, you know, not only do we have to cater to, of course, the golf, golfing guests, but we also have to make sure we have items, too, for the non-golfing guests that comes in here. All right, now back to the golfing guests, because you guys have an amazing array of, of shirts, of, of slacks, shoes, all of it. How do you select that? You know, we, this is something we work with actually with our corporate uh, retail, so our VP of retail, her name is Tanya Morrow. Uh, she actually, we work together a lot. Uh, also get a lot of feedback from guests. You know, we also talk to the different companies on what's selling best. You know, obviously they work with different golf courses. So at the same time, we want to see, you know, we ask them what's selling best as well. You know, that way, you know, we're bringing in the right stuff within the right area. For example, what we, we could sell here may not work if we sold it in Florida or New York. So we always try to make sure that we're in with the trend, but at the same time too, you know, for example, we want to bring in items that people see on TV. You know, if uh, some of the professional tour players are wearing it, you know, some of the big ones, just for example, you know, there's a Xander Shoffley, for example, right next to us here. He wore this shirt in a tournament um, in Hawaii. Ooh. So, you know, uh, John Rahm wore this turn uh, shirt as well. So, you know, the stuff that we work with, the uh, the companies themselves, and uh, to, in order to choose the right things for the, for the shop. And, Keith, I have to mention the chocolate. Chocolate, that's something we brought in a few years ago. Uh, we actually just brought it in as kind of a novelty item just to see how it works, and, I mean... It, it flies. We don't. We can't keep it in stock. It, it's just something. Whether you know someone wants to buy, it's a you know nice little souvenir to to give to the non-golfing guests. You know we'll have people buy them in bunches. Uh, 
which led, you know, it started with the regular milk chocolate and dark chocolate with a silver and gold bar. Now we have five different flavors. I have to say it's delicious too. Yeah, it, it really is. It, it really is. Uh, I'm not so much a chocolate person myself and I've tried it and it's actually it's really good. good. Yeah. And of course you do gift cards, all kind of things like that. A lot of novelty items, um, hats that are always popular. Yeah, actually the, that's Puma. It's actually a Puma hat. Uh, that's something that Puma came out with two years ago. It's uh, been really popular. We put the logo on the side. Nice. It's been a really good, really good sale for us. Uh, but then again, you know, every hat that we bring in, uh, it's always a big hit. We have a nice hat wall for uh, with a lot of different selections, different vendors. Uh, so, you know, whether it has the Trump golf logo, whether it just simply says Trump on it. You know, we, so we make sure that we bring in a good variety of hats for the guests. And of course, ultimately, you have golf clubs and the accessories for that as well. Correct. Yes, we fully stocked. We have, you know, golf clubs within drivers, fairways, putters, wedges, you know, golf balls, golf equipment. We also uh, will hold different fitting day events. So, for example, golf, golf clubs are very personal, you know, so each person should get fitted for their clubs. So, for example, last uh, Friday we had TaylorMade come out. They did a full fitting event on the driving range. On this Saturday, we're working with Callaway, and then we also have True Spec Golf, who's one of our big uh, partners as well within the organization. Very nice. And, you know, I think it's so important to keep things fresh, and Lily and I have talked about that over the years, and this is a great way to do that as well. Yes, definitely, uh, especially with the up updated shop, Pro Shop. You know, we're, we're going to get new fixtures as well, which is really going to brighten things up. Uh, already the shop is a lot brighter just by simply changing the colors. We had green, you know, green carpet, uh, just the kind of plain walls. Now just it's already brightened it up. We also even changed the lights. Uh, we changed them to LED lights, so it makes it brighter yet. We don't feel the heat from it as well. So we did we did a lot. Uh, October was a pretty interesting month where we went through a lot of construction. We closed the pro shop down for about 10 days uh, to go along with we're still open, yet construction going on in the golf shop. So, you know, really commend my staff for working through that. Uh, it wasn't easy. You know, they they would clean a display, for example, and next thing you know, 20 minutes later, there's, you know, there's some dust on the displays, but they kept at it, and it, it was something that was really good. I could commend my staff for that. And what's the feedback been like from the golfers? Oh, it's uh, been loving it. Uh, the first thing they say is, whoa, you changed it around in here a bit. And, uh, you know, everybody's really enjoying it because, like I said, it, it really brightens up the shop since we've uh, – We've uh, done this renovation. It's opened up the shop more. It feels bigger. Everybody, everybody yeah. says, "Oh my gosh, what did you add space?" And yes. we actually didn't. I mean, it's the same exact pro shop, same exact square footage. It's just with the what we did, we're able to open up the shop a little bit more, and just visually, it looks looks like it's bigger. Yeah, I was going to mention that it does feel much bigger now. Keith, thank you so much for letting us come in today and giving us a little private tour. So many great things in here. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you for coming out. And we're definitely, all, you know, we always enjoy having you here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I might have a new favorite thing in here. It's a Trump football. You got to love this. Football season is never over in my life, ever. And that will do it for today's show. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.